Yes! best way that I know how to straighten out this copper is to put it on a flat surface and if it has a tiny bow in it just press down on where that bow is and then turn the thing around and press all of the little bows out of it and you get a nice straight pipe and what I've done is uh, I welded this one piece on here the black pipe and this is where the uh, um, drip system is going to go and then what I did is I made a few pieces to make a corner and then another piece to go all the way. So you see where that hole is in the housing? All right, so that is where the drip system is going to go to. And you wanna keep everything in pieces because you still have to put that copper tube through it. So, one piece at a time, bend it just a little bit. All right, that catches you up. Let's continue. So there's the hole coming in. And as you can see, it's a couple of inches above where the burner is. Remember, I still have to put the uh, brake rotor in there. So that's gonna turn out just fine. All right, now, after you dry fit everything and it's good to go, uh, now I can start putting that copper tube in and fishing this thing through and then I'll weld these pieces together. All right, now that everything is welded up and fitted, I can now trim off the excess so it'll drip right down into that area. It's a, fit, a five gallon bucket, a little bit of oil in it. And we're gonna light this thing off for the first time, see how it operates. Well, it took a little bit, but it is finally off and roaring. going a little bit nuclear. <laughs> Burning all that paint off and closing the lid, which now gave it a little bit of extra um, suck from down below is really causing it to, 
to go wild. I do have the bunghole open. I don't know if you can see it. I know it's getting dark. Sorry, guys. Well, I got a light on the subject. I think I allowed way too much oil to drip down into the area before it actually started going. And when, and now that it's going, it's like going nuclear. So it doesn't have a very clean burn right now, as you can see. And the only uh, opening that I have is the bung hole and whatever is not covered by the lid. But as you can see, it's starting to nukify, which is good. It's supposed to burn that paint off. So this is gonna be a good burn. Uh, of course, I have stopped the oil from going in, so it will uh, gradually start slowing down now. Well, I just got back from the store, got a bunch of stove part, tube pipes, whatever you'd wanna call it. This I can't manufacture. I don't have this kind of uh, equipment. But as soon as I get changed, we're going to start putting that together. Hey, this might be a good time to press that like button. All right, that is a six inch stack and it should go just right about here is where the griddle will go. But again, this will be sheeted off. So heat will still collect up here. Has to uh, eventually though, go down out this hole. That should keep as much heat in this thing as I possibly can instead of it going out the chimney. Okay, let's talk about this drip system here. It did not work very well at all. What I had to do or what it was doing is it was dripping. It would hug the side of the wall here and then it would just basically flow out these two holes. Um, so I kind of welded a little bit here and on the other side just to create a dam so that it would eventually go down the hole. The problem with that is you, you can't see how much is going into it. So I'm going to have to do a redesign at least for now until I can figure out this gate valve. As far as I see things, I have two options. I can either take a copper cap and drill a hole through the center of this and stuff it up inside. And then when the oil comes out, it actually tries to drip out to this center part here where the hole is. And I need to have a laminar flow or at least some kind of flow that is dripping down so I can see it not down the side of the of the housing. The other way I can do it is to solder this guy into place. And that I think will allow it to drip straight down and, uh, and I can see it through the sight glass. So I am going to try this first. The other I'll just monkey with that if I ever get a chance to later on, but I'm gonna try this first.
All right, I moved it to a new location where I think I would like to have it. And here is the test, final test to see if this will actually have some kind of a flow that I can see. Yes! <laughs> it works. That's what I wanted to see. There's one other tip I want to show you. And that is I left, purposely left some gaps so that any heat that is traveling uh, between the pipes can escape out through those little gaps. I was going to drill some holes, but I decided to just, since I had a, a little bit of a gap there anyway, to just leave it. And I think that's going to work out great. The only other thing is, is I'm not going to fire this up again because last time I fired it up, it kind of warp the barrel as you can see <laughs> this kind of bowed out and this side kind of pushed in a little bit and it's just because it doesn't have any of the internal framing that the uh, lid would normally have on it and i need to put that griddle and the two side pieces in and that will help shore up each side from wanting to to push in so i think that that is going to work Guys, I am going to call this complete, but I think that this, this should give you a good idea of how to build a waste oil burner. Yeah. Well, hey guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up for me. I wanna give a shout out to Jerry's DIY. That's where I got a lot of the inspiration to make that waste oil burner. I think I've improved it just a bit though with that ball cock valve because that seems to have a heck of a lot better flow than that stupid gate valve. I don't know if I'm ever going to mess with that gate valve. Maybe I will someday. That's what he used. I'm not recommending it. <laughs> so anyway, guys, until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless. One correction. This is a full tank. I can feel it sloshing around. Huh, nothing. See that little screw hole there? That's how to open up the valve. Hey guys, if you like the video, please click on that like button. Only about 25% of you will, but I hope that it is you. If you also want to subscribe, if you haven't been a subscriber yet, please go ahead and click on my face. You're welcome to, it is totally free. We are almost at a thousand subscribers. Yay, it's taken us a long, long time, but uh, we are finally getting there um, and I can't thank you enough.